My piece, Resistance in Progress, at the Queen's Museum came about really from my years of organizing and activism around housing justice and anti-gentrification and anti-displacement organizing. My concern is really about the generations of people who made the community what it is but now no longer live there. And it's a majority immigrant and people of color community. And what we're seeing is that these transnational companies like from China, international finance and domestic corporations are gentrifying these neighborhoods. So now they want to make it like a Disneyland. You can walk on, but you can't afford to live there. late 70s, early 80s, that was a time when people could actually buy a house. And my parents, who were from Hong Kong and China, were able to pull money together with other family members to buy a house. And now, every other day, people coming in and saying, we'll give you X amount of cash to buy you out, because they want to build up. They want to build a huge condo. They want to knock it down and build up. They don't want working class people like my parents or myself there. They want the really rich, wealthy Asians you know, to move in. And so it's, to me, it's not just a race issue, it's a, a class issue, economics for sure. And so that's what I, I aim to do too in the, the piece at Queens Museum and all of my work is to, is to look at the intersectionality of race and class. What inspires me the most is when people are telling their own stories, people who are organizing and fighting and so when Queen's Museum approached me, I said, you know, I think it makes the most sense to work with uh, the folks who are fighting right here in Flushing and in Corona, Queens. I was able to identify Sion uh, Vion, who is someone who has been living in Flushing all of her adult life. And then Bobby Nathan, who is from the Caribbean, he's from Jamaica, and he's been also organizing for a long time too. And so it was really important for me to tell their stories both as immigrants who both of different generations, but both came as early teens. The first inhabitants of the neighborhood, which are native people, and then going all the way from that period, all the way fast forward to 2020. In, in the moment that I, the exhibit was up, this fight to prevent the rezoning of Flushing. I've been going to that neighborhood for a long time, right? And I noticed that over the years, there's more and more real estate magazines and it's all selling Flushing and selling the Queens, that immediate area. I mean, apartments were like a million dollars. Homes are like 1.5 million, right, dollars. I had this idea of just kind of collecting them together in different languages. Sort of what we call a culture jam of the original New York City Department of Buildings work permit. And on all the condo buildings that you see that are in development, you'll see work in progress, and then you see the big fancy condo that no one can afford in the neighborhood, a picture of it. And so I wanted to uh, remix that, right? Sort of what they call culture jam it, right? Like subvert it. I grew up in Flushing. My parents came here from the Philippines. Um, they also like, you know, didn't have much um, and I don't know, it just kind of makes me sad to see all of the changes that are happening just because it's deeply affecting like people that have lived here for years and have built a life here. Um, but I also think it's important to shed light on what is happening. So I think this exhibition is like great and having people like really understand like kind of like what's happening in the community. I grew up in this community, so I, you know, I spent my whole life here. My mother came from Indonesia, working class immigrant, um, with nothing, absolutely nothing, and she's managed to make a life here. That should be available to everyone. It shouldn't be of only to people who with money. It should be, that's what the U.S. is about. It's for people to come and to achieve something that they, they wouldn't otherwise be able to achieve and pass it on to their children and other generations. And it's unfair. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be so emotional. <laughs>